there's a quiet revolution happening inside labs that most of us will never see firsthand. In the span of just a few months, humanoid robots have gone from performing rehearsed tricks to executing real useful work. Boston Dynamics Atlas just received a pair of hands that may be the most advanced ever built. At the same time, Figure AI has unveiled a humanoid that can wash dishes, fold laundry, and even charge itself completely autonomously. For years, humanoid robotics has been the dream of science fiction and the frustration of engineers. But suddenly, that dream is starting to look real. And this moment, right now, may decide which company defines the next era of automation. For nearly a decade, Atlas has been known as the parkour robot, the viral star of backflips and gymnastics. But Boston Dynamics has never been satisfied with applause. Behind the scenes, the team has been re-engineering the robot's core identity. They've moved beyond motion and into manipulation. The ability not just to move through the world, but to shape it. The key lies in a new gripper called GR2. It looks simple at first glance, compact metallic fingers with rubberized pads. But inside it sits an intricate system of actuators, sensors, and cameras that fundamentally change what a robot hand can do. When Atlas transitioned from hydraulics to a fully electric system, that shift gave engineers a blank canvas. Without the bulk of hydraulic lines, they could finally focus on dexterity the true hallmark of human capability. The result is GR2, a seven degree of freedom hand with three fingers and for the first time, an opposable thumb. That thumb is more than symbolic. It allows Atlas to pinch, twist, stabilize and reorient objects with precision that was once impossible for machines of its kind. Each finger has two actuators controlling motion and grip while the thumb adds an extra actuator that enables complex multi-contact holds, the kind humans perform without thinking every day. But dexterity isn't just about movement, it's about feeling. GR2's fingertips contain tactile sensors buried beneath an elastomer skin, capable of detecting deformation and pressure changes in real time. That's Atlas's sense of touch, it tells the control system exactly how much force is being applied, whether something is slipping or if it's about to crush a delicate object. In one demo, Atlas picks up irregularly shaped tools, adjusts its grip on the fly, and threads components together with a kind of mechanical intuition. Inside each palm sits a miniature camera, a visual backup for when the robot's main head-mounted vision is blocked. Imagine Atlas reaching into a cabinet. Those palm cameras provide spatial context, guiding the fingers when the line of sight is gone. Every gripper module is self-contained. Actuation, sensing, and electronics are all built inside. If one gets damaged, it can be swapped out like a tool head. That modularity is critical for the rugged, unpredictable environments where Atlas trains places where falls are part of learning. Boston Dynamics built GR2 to survive them. Interestingly, Boston Dynamics resisted the temptation to add more fingers. Early prototypes explored four and five finger hands, but each addition introduced new failure modes and exponential complexity. The engineers realized that three fingers plus a thumb hit the sweet spot between dexterity, reliability, and manufacturability. That minimalism reflects a broader philosophy. Don't mimic humans for aesthetics. Mimic them for function. As the team puts it, the field will naturally drift toward more anthropomorphic designs as tasks demand it. And we're starting to see exactly that. The new Atlas can not only pick up and move objects, it can manipulate them, rotate a block, align a tool, thread a wire, adjust tension, all autonomously. These subtle, coordinated movements are what separate a performer from a worker. For decades, robots were either strong or smart, but rarely both. 
Atlas is closing that gap. Of course, power and precision bring risk. A 150-pound humanoid robot swinging its arms in an industrial space is not something to take lightly. Boston Dynamics learned this lesson early. They've seen how quickly balance failures can escalate. Every actuator in Atlas now includes built-in safety constraints. If torque spikes or instability is detected, control loops automatically dampen motion. This is about preventing what engineers call failure cascades, where one small error causes the whole system to fall apart, literally. Safety isn't just physical, it's perceptual. A humanoid robot that looks and moves like us but lacks predictable behavior can trigger what psychologists call the uncanny valley effect, the discomfort of seeing something almost human, but not quite. Boston Dynamics knows this, and you can see their design shift. Atlas's movements are becoming smoother, more intentional, and less erratic. They're not just chasing performance, they're chasing trust. While Boston Dynamics perfects mechanical finesse, Figure AI is chasing a different frontier, scale. Their newest robot, Figure 03, aims to move humanoids from lab prototypes to everyday tools. It's shorter and lighter than before. Standing at about 1.68 meters, roughly 5 foot 6, and weighing around 60 kilograms. The company shaved nearly 10% off its mass compared to the previous generation, giving it more balance and efficiency. But the real innovation isn't the frame. It's what drives it, Helix, Figure AI's proprietary Vision Language Action System. Helix allows Figure 03 to interpret instructions, observe human demonstrations, and generalize new behaviors without direct teleoperation. This is a step toward what the company calls embodied intelligence, an AI that doesn't just think, but acts. Unlike many industrial robots, Figure 03 is designed for environments filled with people. Its shell is covered in soft, washable material with rounded corners and padded joints to minimize injury risk. All exposed metal is gone. Cameras embedded in its head and palms provide an ultra-wide 60% larger field of view than before, with frame rate latency reduced by 75%. Each fingertip is equipped with custom-built tactile sensors that detect pressure changes as small as a paperclip resting on the surface. The fingertips themselves are made of flexible polymer that deforms gently against objects, maintaining stability without slipping. Together, those changes make Figure 03 surprisingly human safe, an essential quality if robots are to share our kitchens, offices, or hospitals. But what truly sets Figure AI apart is its manufacturing ambition. Instead of custom machining every joint and bracket, the company uses die casting, injection molding, and stamping, techniques borrowed from consumer electronics. That shift means cost drops dramatically with volume. Their facility in San Jose, called Bot Cube, is targeting an initial run of 12,000 units per year scaling toward 100,000 within four years. If they reach that, Figure AI could become the first company to mass-produce humanoids at commercial scale. Each robot can carry up to 20 kilograms, run five hours on a charge, and recharge wirelessly through a two kilobalard floor dock, meaning it can work, rest, and resume without human help. In demonstrations, Figure 03 cleans kitchens, folds towels, stocks shelves, and interacts with humans through voice. It's not science fiction anymore. It's a working prototype of a domestic assistant. But here's the nuance. Most of those demos happen under tightly controlled conditions. Tech journalist David Zundi, who toured Figure's lab, noted that every clip you've seen was filmed in a space designed for predictability. Flat floors, marked objects, 
and no random interference. Real homes and workplaces are messy. They're filled with pets, toys, reflections, unexpected shadows. The kind of chaos that can confuse even the best vision systems. The reality gap. The difference between controlled demo success and real-world robustness remains one of the biggest barriers in robotics. Boston Dynamics knows this all too well. Their early Atlas demos were highly choreographed, but over the years, the company shifted toward adaptability testing. Uneven terrain, variable weights, changing lighting. The goal isn't perfection in a lab, it's resilience in the wild. What's fascinating is how these two paths, mechanical dexterity and embodied intelligence, are beginning to converge. Boston Dynamics GR2 could be paired with AI models that understand context, not just how to grab, but why. Meanwhile, figure AI's Helix system could benefit from more sophisticated manipulation hardware. Both sides are moving toward what researchers call physical AI the merging of high-level reasoning with low-level motor control. And powering all of it are new computing platforms like NVIDIA's Jetson Thor, a chip designed specifically for edge robotics. It combines GPU, CPU, and AI accelerators into a single module capable of real-time perception, decision-making, and motion planning. These chips are effectively giving robots a nervous system, one that can perceive, think, and react in milliseconds. Boston Dynamics represents the precision school, mastering one capability at a time, refining the engineering until it's bulletproof. Figure AI represents generalization, training the robot to learn through experience, even if each individual component is less perfect. This mirrors the broader AI landscape, traditional engineering versus data-driven learning. Both paths have merit, and both are likely to intersect. The most successful humanoid might not come from one company, but from a fusion of both approaches. The physical robustness of Atlas with the cognitive flexibility of Figure 03, Tesla's Optimus, Unitree's G1, and China's Walker S1 are also accelerating this arms race. Each has its own advantage. Tesla's energy efficiency, Unitree's balance recovery, Walker's mobility. But at the heart of it, everyone's chasing the same question. When will humanoids finally become useful? The shift from demonstration to deployment is where the economics change. A single robot that can operate safely in a logistics warehouse could replace or augment multiple repetitive human tasks. Packaging, inspection, transport. But as cost falls and capability rises, these robots will begin to enter service industries, hotels, retail, elder care. That's where human-robot interaction becomes paramount. You don't want a machine that simply follows commands. You want one that understands intent. That's the real challenge of human-level intelligence in robotics. Not consciousness, but competence. The ability to navigate ambiguity, anticipate needs, and operate seamlessly alongside us. Inevitably, the rise of humanoids raises familiar fears. Job displacement, loss of privacy, even existential anxiety about being replaced. But right now, these machines are far from substitutes for human creativity or empathy. Instead, they're extensions, tools that can take on the dull, dirty, or dangerous tasks that humans prefer to avoid. In hospitals, they might move linens or deliver meals. In construction, they could carry materials in hazardous zones. In manufacturing, they could handle toxic processes that put humans at risk. The ultimate goal isn't to remove humans from work, but to redefine what work means, shifting us from physical effort to supervisory creativity. The next five years will determine the winners. Boston Dynamics Partnership Network, including Hyundai and major logistics firms, gives it industrial leverage. Figure AI's aggressive scaling plan 
could make it the first consumer-facing humanoid brand. Tesla's Optimus benefits from integration with the company's manufacturing ecosystem. What happens next will depend on which frontier advances faster – dexterity, intelligence or scalability. When all three intersect, we'll cross a threshold – from prototype to product. What's remarkable is how quietly this revolution is unfolding. Ten years ago, humanoid robots were novelties. Today, they're legitimate business ventures. The conversation has shifted from, can we build them, to how do we integrate them? Boston Dynamics is now fine-tuning the mechanics of touch. Bigger AI is teaching robots the language of action. And somewhere between them lies the blueprint for the first truly useful humanoid. When Atlas picks up a wrench without crushing it, or when Figure 03 clears a table without knocking over a glass, those are small glimpses of a world where machines no longer just mimic humans. They collaborate with us. Every few months, the bar moves higher. Robots are no longer performing for the camera. They're preparing for deployment. The line between research and reality is blurring fast. Whether it's Atlas threading a wire with millimeter precision or Figure 03 tidying a kitchen, we're witnessing a profound transition. The birth of robots that can work in the human world. And as that happens, one question lingers. Who will set the standard for the machines that will one day share our homes, our offices, and perhaps even our sense of purpose? Because this race, the race to build the first truly capable humanoid, isn't just about technology. It's about what kind of world we want to build with it. Thanks for watching.